have to look at these things that are occupying your mind, that busy you, and you have to say, where is the source from which they're coming from? And Imam al-Ghazali says, the things that busy you are the things that you find important. You're not going to think about things that are not important to you. So he says, and then you realize that those things that are important to you, if they're distracting you in the salah, and they're, they seem more important in that moment than what you're actually in, he says that those stem from your desires. Those thoughts stem from what's important to you. What's important to you, if it's getting in the way of your salah, it stems from your shahawat, stems from your desires. So then the way that a person disciplines the nafs is by cutting off those attachments. It is really trying to uproot those desires and cutting off those attachments. And really that is freedom. You know, now even in a material sense, people are talking about, you know, minimalism and things of that nature. You know, what you own, owns you. And not living like, like that anymore. But actually realizing that there's so man, many more meaningful things, even in a worldly sense, more than all of these things that occupy us. So you have to get to the root of it and cut that out. Because everything that distracts that person in his salah is contradictory to his deen. And it is the soldiers of Iblis and one of his uh, uh, the Muslims' enemies. So holding on to that thing. And he mentions the story of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is for us to learn. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had a ring. And he, when he was giving the khutbah, he delivered the khutbah and he would look at his new ring Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he said, this ring has distracted me and he gave it away Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to teach us how you break those attachments. And if this is getting in the way, I'm going to give it away. I don't need it. And that way I will be light before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then uh, finally, he tells us a few stories of some of the Sahaba. So, Aba Talha صلى في حائط له في شجر. That Abu Talha he was pr pr uh, praying in an enclosed place where he had some trees there. So as he was praying, he saw a little bird that flew from the trees, and he was impressed by the beauty of the bird. So he said that his eyesight followed the bird. So when he was done, he mentioned to the Messenger of Allah the tribulation that he was afflicted with. Look at the level of the Sahaba. It's a bird flying. The tribute, but he's, this got in the way of my salah, so this is one of my enemies. And one of the things that is harming my deen. So then he said to the Prophet وسلم, I give away that those trees in that area that I was praying in, that I own, I give it away Sadaqah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want it anymore. He let go of it. And another, uh, 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 another man did the same thing, and he gave it to Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, and Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan sold that garden for 50,000 uh, uh, dirhams or dinars. He sold it for 50,000. It was very valuable. He got rid of it. Because it got in the way of his deen. So we have to really, Imam al-Ghazali, he's going deep. If you want to uproot the tree that is bearing rotten fruit, you have to uproot it. So they did that so they could cut off the source of all of these passing thoughts. And also as an expiation for their shortcomings in the salah. So this is the medicine, this is the treatment, and it is bitter. It is difficult, but this is the treatment. Because what we mentioned about forcing your nafs to listen to what's being said in the salah, that's a, a temporary, easier approach, and it won't solve the problem long term. 